Over the last decades, the world has witnessed armed conflicts marked by systematic violence and mass atrocities against civilians, and has increasingly looked to the United Nations, and in particular UN peacekeeping operations, to prevent and halt such crimes. Since the 1990s, the wars have been mainly internal. They have been brutal, claiming more than five million lives. The protection of civilians in the contemporary conflict environment is a very difficult task, and the nature of the conflict is changing. Uh, first, uh, civil wars they do not recognize national boundaries. State uh, fragile or uh, non-existent. Uh, extreme poverty is part of the conflict. Marginalized population. Uh, presence of the international terrorist and extremist groups, which operate in a number of countries, uh, organized crimes. Sometimes it's very difficult to make a distinction between who is a terrorist, who is armed opposition, and who is a crime gang. So all this makes uh, the core task uh, of the UN Peace King, which is protection of civilians, extremely challenging and complex. The failures of peace operations to protect civilians in armed conflicts, such as in the Central African Republic and South Sudan, and to prevent mass atrocities in Rwanda and Bosnia, have challenged the fundamental principles and capabilities of international peace operations, and demonstrated that new approaches are needed to better protect the vulnerable during the conflicts of today. The way the UN troops today are conducting their operations hasn't adapted according to the challenges and according to the changes in the conflicts. Both civilian and military peace operations recognize the moral duty and operational importance of protecting threatened civilian populations in armed conflicts. Despite this consensus, the peace operations face challenges to put this aspiration in practice. POC has become very central to UN peacekeeping. In fact, the measure of success of a UN peacekeeping operation today is being measured by the way it protects civilians. One of the key challenges is to maintain the legitimacy in the eyes of the host nation. Without it, the international community cannot build sustainable peace, yet the legitimacy and credibility of the peace operation is dependable on their ability to protect those at risk. At times, the activities of the peacekeepers can be seen to cause more harm than good by the local population. At times, the peacekeepers are perceived as the predators themselves or incapable to provide protection. Mission leadership needs to engage uh, with the host government in such a manner that the UN is seen as an enabler and not as an intervening force as far as the protection is concerned. To implement preventative measures to the extent possible, yet when needed, be capable and ready to use force to ensure the physical protection for the civilians. The biggest challenge we are facing today is this concept of physical protection as to really uh, what does it entail and how and what level of use of force do we expect uh, from the troop contributing countries to intervene in this area. There has been a lack of coherence in the leadership, um, ability to provide uh, guidance and priorities on the use of forces and on the use of the assets of uh, the mission. Most fundamentally, civilian insecurity must be addressed before peace can be settled. As seen in Rwanda, the Balkans, Sierra Leone, South Sudan and Defor, among others, peacekeeping operations that are ill-prepared to address large-scale violence directed against civilians will falter and may even collapse. What can be done in order to change the course of action? and increase the likelihood for success in the modern peacekeeping operations? We have to provide effective and practical training for all the military, civilian and police peacekeepers. First of all, we have to improve training. Training must be enhanced so that the troops deploying will be able to meet the entire range of challenges they face. Secondly, 
we have to improve our command and control arrangements. This does also include better use of technology. We also have to improve our planning, planning capacities and the way we do planning uh, across the various units and components in a mission. The countries that have now been able to collect experience over two decades from international operations should be able to share their experience with those troops and countries that are now committed to UN peace operations today and in the future. Peacekeeping missions do not and cannot be responsible for the protection of civilians alone. Protection of civilians is the shared responsibility, the common goal for the peace building community. Now, it is time to stop talking and to go for the action and find the solutions. It's about time to find a way to join our efforts and competencies for enhanced peace and security.